This is the first in a series of lessons in which we'll break down the mechanics and behavior of classes and instances. As we discussed, classes are instance factories, and they define a blueprint for creating an instance. Let's create our first class, and then we'll go right ahead and create an instance of that class. I'm going to create a class called my class, and I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm going to make it the simplest possible class, that is, a class that doesn't do anything at all. For now, let's postpone discussing the word object in this example, because it has to do with class inheritance, and we'll be discussing that soon. Pass is unique to Python. It indicates that a block has no contents. It's, of course, unique to Python because of the way Python handles its block structure by reading indents. If we didn't have anything in this block, Python would be confused that there's seemingly no end to the block. The inclusion of pass indented means this is some block. When we get back to the left margin, we know we've reached the end of the block. So what we have here is an empty class definition. Let's create an instance. So what is this object? From previous examples, you can infer that this object is a my class instance or a my class object. Let's print it and see what it has to say about itself. Looks like we have a my class instance, all right. The main in front of the my class refers to the namespace. It's the namespace of the script currently being executed. This is a module thing, so we don't need to worry about it for our purposes. The main point is that by printing the instance, we're able to see that we indeed have an instance of my class. The hex code to the right refers to the address in memory where the object is being stored. This is also something that we don't need for this lesson. It simply indicates the identity of the object by showing you where it's being stored. If you create a second instance, you'll see that it has a different address. So let's do that right now. That obj equals my class. Actually, I'm going to do something I did before, which is include a few print statements so that we get a little more clarity. So there it is. We have two my class instances, and you'll notice that the hex code is slightly different. It points to a different address in memory. We use this hex code only when we're interested in making sure that two objects are the same or different. Because as you know, the labels that we assign to each object are arbitrary. I get to choose whatever label I want to assign to each object. There's no way of identifying the object except by actually printing it and looking at the hex code. Now let's take one more step and create a variable in the class and then show that the instances have access to that variable. What we've done is added a variable to my class. We've called it var. And then look what we're doing here. We're taking each object and saying object.var, the same name that we used in the variable. Let's see what we get there. Sure enough, we see the value from the my class definition in each of the objects. How are these variables available to each of the instances? Well, this is part of the magic. However, we do know that an instance knows from which class it came. So when we ask for an attribute from an instance, the instance looks for that attribute in the class. We're going to see that it looks for the attribute in its own set of attributes first, but for now, we can see at least that it's able to find the attribute in the class. This starts to paint the picture of how classes and instances interact, but it'll take a few more lessons to complete it. For now, let's delineate the first two of six points that you'll want to absorb in order to understand how classes work. An instance of a class knows what class it's from. Variables defined in the class are available to the instance. This is the first two of six points that are going to build our understanding of the mechanics of classes and instances. So in this lesson, we've shown that classes are automatically able to create instances. We've demonstrated that each instance is aware of the class from which it came. And lastly, we've shown that variables defined in the class are available in the instances through object attribute syntax. Again, we're saying object.attribute. And the attribute is actually not located in the instance. It's located in the class, but we're able to access it nonetheless. And that's because of the relationship between the instance and the class. In the next lesson, we'll see how variables defined in the class can also be functions. And that's how we get to methods.